Welcome to another Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, I'm going to be diving into the Vault Hunters event that is going on currently. This is a little bit lighter of a content, but I think that this is a great way to round out what has been an already awesome season for Sea of Thieves. All that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. Of course, this episode of Keel Hauled is brought to you by the people that are supporting me over on Patreon. So feel free to join up. We are doing events this month that are going to be just for the patrons to try and thank them for their support. Uh, if it works out well, then I'll look to see if we can do it with the rest of the community as long as there's time and people are interested. But I have to thank all the folks that join up. So thank you. Chateau Neuf, Cosmic Johnson, El Jefe Esteban, Lumpy SRQ, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Morpheus, Michael O'Rourke, Regis, Stella, Rust Belt Kid, TN Professor, Todd Meister, Big Bad Pad, Mina Ferry, CJ Super Pack, Davram TV, Frank F, Kazia the Rogue, Windsor Chris, and Zam Wow. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And with that, let's get into the show. All right, Pirates, just a few things that I wanted to get out of the way as time is of the essence. If you're listening to this, I want you to let you or I wanted to let you know that there are a couple crucial dates that you need to know about. First off, the next event, this event, Vault Hunters, is ending in 11 days at the time of recording this, which means it's ending on the 15th. According to the in-game event uh you have to get this done by the 15th and that that shouldn't be too hard i did one session today and after a few hours uh I mean, we managed to get pretty much all of it done i think i've got to get 20 more actual favors for the gold hoarders done to get that title which you know could could come or go doesn't matter too much the one thing that i did want to let everyone know about though the season ends in four days on the 8th of April. So I didn't think it was ending so soon. I, I actually thought it was ending later. Time has really just snuck up on me. So if you are out there and you were looking to get this done, now is the time to be getting those last few things. Definitely drop into your trials in the actual season one pirate log. Make sure you're taking a look at what's available to you. You can go out and do a lot of the uh, different tall tales to get those done to try and actually help out with that. You can do things by talking to different NPCs, by going on to the different islands. Heck, if you just head out to the Devil's Roar, you can actually see uh, a lot of renown earned just by jumping on all of the different islands out there. So take a look through those trials. Make sure you're taking advantage of your sessions when you can and just try and get as much gold in, in and as you can or pirate or kill other people. Sail around with a voyage on your table. Uh, if you see barrels out in the water and they have any kind of treasure, if you don't want to pick them up at least just jump off the ship and go touch them because that renown will count hopefully you'll get this in the next few days if you were in that last bit of sailing uh this is this is going to be interesting to see if it's going to pop up right as uh the season ends if we're going to get season two uh originally i was anticipating that the season would end on the 15th of april i didn't realize it was actually coming up so quickly so i have a feeling that when the vault hunters event goes down that is when season two will kick off they will probably uh, turn off vault hunters and do a maintenance and then maintenance will end and season two will begin on the 15th i don't see them actually kicking up season two after this event ends on four days uh, i could be wrong though i i actually don't know um this is just me kind of speculating at this point we haven't heard any word from rare so far uh as, as to what they're going to be doing typically uh i would imagine that we are going to be getting into a video soon i imagine that rare is going to put out a sea of thieves news video at some point letting us know what season two can expect and then the following week we will probably see that season kick off so i'm kind of anticipating that this week we'll actually get that video and then the following week we'll then actually get the beginning of season two 
Some of the other things I want to let you know about, if you head over to the Pirate Emporium, there is a time-limited cosmetic. The Reaper's Mark sales are back. They are going to be leaving fairly shortly, and I wanted to make sure that everyone that's reading this has an opportunity to actually make sure they go and pick those up. I was taking a look at the actual uh, uh, website, and it looks like these are only going to be available for the next four days. The website states that they're time-limited, that the Reaper's Mark sales will be available to buy for the remainder of Season 1, but returning to their mysterious repository somewhere beyond the shroud meaning in the vault uh, i'm sure they'll probably bring this out at some other point as this is the first time that they brought it back so if you want to get them you can head over to the pirate emporium they're available for 499 ancient coin which in america is roughly about five dollars and 49 cents actually sorry scratch that in the united states it's five dollars 49 america has different currencies because of mexico and canada and all that fun jazz it's going to vary depending on where you're at but i would definitely recommend head over to the pirate emporium if that's that's what you want to pick up make sure you pick up the reapers mark sales also uh just a reminder too that the um emote is available right now and the emote is going to be leaving uh that is I believe time limited for it being free. I don't know if this is in line with the season. Uh, the season ends in four days. The time limited stuff uh, says that it expires in 11 days, but the website says that it extends to the end of season one. So I'm a little confused about that. We seem to be getting a little different information from Rare on this. Uh, the, the, the Pirate Emporium actually says 11 days. The website says that it's at the end of the season. The game says that the season ends in four days. So I'm not quite sure who to believe on this. But if you had to, if, if I had to take a guess, I would play place my, my bet on the safer date and just recommend that you get it within the next four days. That's going to be your best bet, honestly. All right, pirates. So let's talk about the Vault Raiders. This was an interesting event because uh, I wanted to read a little bit from the website and also from some of the information that we got from Lorena. The Gold Hoarder's treasure is under threat, so many pirates need to sail out on voyages to bring it back safely. They've recruited the Brilled Rats to help, too, but only allowed Lorena to offer voyages to a particular treasure vault, meaning that many, many pirates' paths may are uh, destined to cross. Um, this was fairly quickly for most people. Uh, in fact, I think a lot of people were kind of down on it being so easy to accomplish. The, I talked about the different ways last episode on how you could earn favors, and... From my own experience, as well as hearing anecdotally from others, it is, in fact, something that is uh, much easier to get than, say, like the Order of Souls or even the fishing event that we had recently. I'm OK with this because the rewards for it are really nice. Uh, I, I really like the gold hoarder aesthetic. I think that the key is really interesting. This event in itself was not too big of a deal as far as like an event event goes, but the lore behind it was actually kind of interesting. Uh, if you head over to Lorena while this is still active in Bear in mind, this is still active for another 11 days. You can talk to her and uh, find out that she is kind of talking about the treasure vaults. Uh, one of the, the actual things about telling her what the treasure vaults are about kind of explains what these uh, these gold hoarders are doing with these and why people are interested in the ancient thing. The, the one criticism that I had when the ancient vaults came out was is that I was frustrated that it didn't work the same way as the tall tail puzzle vaults. They're the same vaults, but they act differently. And it's weird that that is is the case and they're kind of reusing the same thing. But I'm OK with that in a sense, because I, I enjoy those vaults. The one thing that I did want to mention is that I appreciate that in this, she actually talks about not wanting to linger too long in the vault unless you're a splash tail, meaning that it's going to fill with water and you're going to drown unless you're a fish, which obviously we aren't. So I, I did like this because it, it, it gives you a mechanic that if you spend the time reading uh, which many people usually don't. And I, I don't blame them for that. I want to get in and actually have fun in the game. But if you actually spent the time reading, you would get an understanding of what is intended with the vaults. That's not the interesting lore bit. The interesting lore bit that I like is this little bit at the end here. She says, uh, in a response to a question that's posed to, her, posed to her by you as the pirate, you don't like the gold hoarders, question mark. She says, I never said that, but their leader and I had a falling out when I first arrived. Well, he did most of the falling. I've learned it wisest not to judge a pirate too harshly by who their friends are. People are complicated. She's talking about Wrathbone. She's talking about when she got to the Sea of Thieves and met the Gold Hoarder at Tribute Peak. That's something that we haven't really seen in the game that much. 
where there's actually reference to the book in the lore in the game. I really appreciate that they're doing this because I'm looking forward to the next book that comes out and how that's going to tie into the game itself with that canon lore that is always brought to us through the expanded universe. So I really love this. She kind of leans into the idea. It's like, hey, yeah, you know, I actually had a bit of a scuffle and a falling out, quote unquote, with the gold hoarder uh, Rathbone as he was kind of turned into the gold hoarder that we know. And the comment that she doesn't judge people too harshly based on their friends. She's talking about the gold hoarder uh, trading company people. She's talking about how her her past dealings with others and how other people deal with other people or interact with other people shouldn't be necessarily the way that we judge them. We should be judging people based on their actions, not who they are friends with or who they know or who they've had to do work with in the past, because everyone's made mistakes and everyone has always had someone they haven't always been happy to be with, but they work with them. And it's coming to that common goal of working with someone else, even if you're not necessarily in line with their same uh, viewpoints or, or discussions. Many people in the community have different opinions on how the game should play out, but it's the fact that we all love the game that's really important. And I love that they are kind of bringing that thread into the story, using Lorena as a way to say like, hey, you know what? I didn't like Rathbone. I hated him. I, I don't like what he's about. I'm not cool with him. I'm okay with the gold hoarders because I understand. And she says this, I'm sure the time will come when we'll need to work together to protect this place, regardless of which flag we fly. That is very telling. And it's very clear that what she's talking about is Flameheart. She's talking about the fact that she thinks that at some point we're going to come to a head with the story and with Flameheart, and that we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do about that. And it's not just going to be one group of pirates that are working towards stopping Flameheart. It's going to have to be the entire Sea of Thieves. We're all going to have to come together. We're all going to have to reach out with a hand to grab someone else and get that help that we need to stop Flameheart, to push him back into the Sea of the Damned, to lock him away, to lock his soul away, to get, out, get rid of him in some aspect. And I think that time is coming. She says, maybe I've just been standing out here too long overthinking things, overthinking things. It might be time for a grog. She kind of plays it off. She doesn't want to get too serious because that's not what Lorena's about. I really love her as a character because she really kind of epitomizes us as the player. Uh, she came to see a thieves the same way that we did. And I really appreciate her being the new leader of the, the build rack company. And I, and I think it's so much better because she, she understands that there's a give and a take with things with Duke. It was always about just going out and doing whatever was, was adventurous. It was always about just going out and getting into trouble. And it's, and it's bit him in the, in the, in the rear for this. He, he recognizes that what he did was wrong, that he was going too gun ho on being adventurous and not having an even keel on how to approach things in life, not only with the, the reputation that he has, but also with the reputations with the other trade companies. They always helped him out. They always gave him stuff to do, but he always kept pushing it further and further and further to the point now where. He is actually at the root of what's going on with a lot of the problems in Sea of Thieves. If it wasn't for him, and I don't, I don't mean to, to, to say that it's all him, but if it wasn't for him, I don't think Stitcher Jim would have been in the position that he was to be able to get the relics that he needed to help the masked stranger, to convert the old boot fort, which many people don't remember was the name of that fort, to convert it to the Fort of the Damned, where now Gray Morrow has this linked ability to cross into our realm from the Sea of the Damned and be a presence in our game or in our world. And Lorena seems like she is a lot, a lot steady or a lot more steady with her thoughts, with her process on that. And I appreciate the hell out of that because it, it says to me that she isn't going to give us something that she hasn't thought about ahead of time. She's actually considering what's going on. And likewise, the trade companies are only trusting her with one vault voyage. Now, depending on your reputation, you can pick up a vault voyage. And if you have pretty good reputation with the gold hoarders, they'll give you a pretty good key uh, map or compass to go find a good key to get a good vault. And that'll help out with getting the different captain's chests that you need 
for these favors. Uh, Lorena, on the other hand, she's going to get something that is probably less valuable of a vault, so one that hasn't been filled up as much, and offer it, but it's going to be in the same place every single time. You just have to find the right key to unlock that vault uh, after they've on it, are already emptied it and, and more people have put stuff in there. It's a weird way. It's a game thing to have to try and look past lore wise, but you know, sometimes you got to do that. Um, I've really been enjoying the little tidbits of lore that we've been getting into with this season. Uh, I think this season has really kind of pulled out little things like I, I, I promise you, I've been on insiders. I've, I've seen what's coming in season two. I've seen what's coming in the rest of the year. It's going to be an amazing year. It's going to be a really, really awesome year. And I can't wait to dive into it when I'm allowed to, but there are still things that I am completely clueless about. There are things that I still don't understand all the, the changes that are going on with all the different outposts. I am still very unclear about what is actually going on with those, but I'm excited to find out and see what's actually going to be happening with those. And in fact, there's even stuff going on with Duke. Duke has been talking about actually hold on. All right, so let's get into Duke uh, because there's been a lot of interesting stuff that's going on that I think has actually been going inside the game as well as outside of the game. There's been a lot of people, especially over on Reddit, in discords, uh, on social media that have been doing the due diligence of really kind of digging into some stuff. And Rare has been leaving these little bits of uh, teasers here and there to try and give us something to work with. Um, it kind of started with one actual tweet uh, or not tweet. It was actually a an image that was about a week ago that they posted of a skeleton hand and a skull on top of a torn piece of parchment that had eight different skeleton runes, uh, runes, not ruins, runes on it. I'm going to I'm trying so hard, guys. Really, I am. And each of these uh, represent different things. A few of these we know, like rock, sea, boat, and then the other ones we don't. But we've been getting some little hints here and there. Uh, thanks to some folks that have actually been digging around there. I, I followed their trails and confirmed that some of these things are true. Now, one of the ruin, runes that we uh, didn't really understand, but I think we have a better understanding of, is the first one. And it actually came as a, a, a March 27th. Um, sea of Thieves tweeted out an image of someone in the tinker's costume holding out a silvered cup offering out a silvered cup now i don't know how they managed to to see this and i and i have questions on whether or not they got the same image if they might have gotten a higher res image but someone's actually sh seen that there is an embossed symbol on the lip of that cup that is the same image that is the first rune on the page. Now, the interesting thing is, is I actually went into the game last night and found a silvered cup and looked at it very closely. And I did not see this, this image, which to me shows that that rare is looking to try and feed us these little, little tidbits of things through their social media to give us clues as to what's going on. And looking at the image that's on the front or the first uh, rune, on the page and comparing it to what we already have based on the skeleton alphabet or, or library that was established in the past uh, tall tales as well as other uh, things it is very close to the symbol gold so it's it does not it doesn't seem like it's a stretch to believe that this could actually be silver as it is lacking in the uh, complexity that gold is but gold is a higher value compared to silver in, in most cases. So it, it seems to work sense. So the second one, we don't really know what it is. Uh, there's a couple, a couple hints, but if the first one is silver and the third one is boat, it might be that they're talking about the silver blade, which is Flameheart Jr.'s ship. Now, a lot of this is courtesy of Falcor. Uh, he has, he and I have been talking about this. I've been reading a lot of the lore channel in the Sea of Thieves Discord, uh, as well as other folks, and sticking with the actual Reddit uh, post. Now, I'm, I'm going to put in the links if you guys want to follow along in in the links uh for the show notes i'm going to leave the link to the duke clues about the mysterious runes 
uh, for uh, on over on Reddit, the ruins that we're talking about, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of skipping ahead here. Let me go back. So we know that the first three are probably silver blade boat or ship. So that's, that feels very, very secure. We don't know what the fourth one is. We don't know what the fifth one is. The sixth one is rock. The seventh one is sea. And then the last one, we don't know. But I have an idea of one that last one might be. In fact, I have an idea on what four and eight are. The one that I don't know is the the fifth one. But thanks to Falcor and doing a little a little processing, I, I tend to agree with his assessment of it. The last one is interesting. Um, and, and a lot of this is really strange because not much of this is is found in game. Some of it's found in social media, and I'm not sure why Instagram is the place to go for this because I haven't seen it on Twitter, which is why I was kind of catching up to get used to this. But on uh, the this last week, five days ago, according to the fourth when I'm reading this, so the 31st, uh, Sea of Thieves sent out a post on Instagram says the quote unquote, this is and this was actually kind of the trivia Tuesday. That was interesting because I think it's different. Um, the image itself is actually photoshopped. I can tell I've seen a lot of shops in my day, but if you look at the image, it has a a image of one of the merfolk that help you get back to your ship, but it is clear that the left arm is duplicated and it's it's strange because you don't, you don't typically see that uh, when they're taking an image, it seems weird that they would Photoshop it. Usually they set up the photo and they take it and then they just post that. But this is clearly something that has been Photoshopped. So the reason I bring that up is on the left uh, uh, breast of the merfolk, there is a part of the cloth that is torn away and underneath of it is what looks like a tattoo. Now, unfortunately, Instagram is really bad about this. Uh, It's one of the things I hate about the platform itself is you don't really have an easy way to uh, zoom in or save photos, especially on their website. I absolutely hate their website because You cannot save photos and I don't understand why I think it's really dumb. Just let me save the damn photo because I have to use it for reference. And anytime I use the actual app, the app itself won't just let me zoom in. You know, when you do the pinch and zoom on the photo, it always reverts back to its original thing. And if you tap it, it doesn't do anything. It just, you know, you can double tap it and like it. Congratulations. You contributed to the algorithm. Getting past all of that, this tattoo is very, very distinct, even as hard as it is is to tell because of the resolution that they're using. But it looks like it might be one of the symbols on that page. It looks like it might be that last symbol where it is just a couple dashes on a line. Now, I'm I'm, I'm going on faith that that's what this is. And the only thing that I have to really lean on that has to do with Duke. Duke has been out there um he goes out there and says that he's he's looking for these ancient things uh and if you you listen to what he's talking about he says uh i found one clue out near some sort of altar thing it looked like it was set up for a ritual at least what he's talking about he's talking about one of the gray morrow summoning altars and the one that he's talking about in particular is on kraken's fall that's fairly easy. Uh, the ruin resembles a shining triangle, gray, waking, moonlight, all with question marks. So it's clear that there's a rune that they think might mean either gray, waking, or moonlight, and it's a shining triangle. I'm not sure what that lends itself to, but I'm, I'm going to hold off on that for now because there's two others that we need to get onto. The next one is the one that I think is the most important, but I'm going to get onto the third one first. The third one is on the unmarked island at K9, which I found out actually has a dog on there that I never noticed, and I'm just dumb for not noticing it. But Duke says, I had to hold my breath to find another. I'm not sure that place even has a name. I only, uh, if only I can work out what they mean. So this is where you have to dive under there. There's actually a skeleton uh, chair or throne in this area where you would actually go and sit down to get credit for the skeleton thrones event uh, that they that they tend to bring in cycle. And this one's actually located on top of a barrel in the cave beneath K9. And the rune resembles a droplet tumbling from a diamond, a droplet tumbling from a diamond or a dot underneath a diamond. And the meaning for this rune is coral below or sorrow. One of those three coral below or sorrow. 
I'll get into that later. The one that I want to talk about is the one that's actually over on Mermaid's Hideaway. This one, Duke says, I stumbled upon another while I was, where was it again? The place I was investigating last month, which we know was Mermaid's Hideaway, located next to the ladder above the cave on Mermaid's Hideaway, exactly where he was. And the ruin resembles a curving path, which forks in two. So a curving path, which forks into two. Now that's where I want to go back to that page. I want to go back to this page that they posted back on the 24th and take a look at what we've got. Now I'm, I'm stretching on this. I really know I am. Uh, uh, it's pure speculation, but it, it makes sense. So hear me out. The last one of those runes, not runes, runes is a line that has two little dashes. Now, I don't know if this is intentional. It very well could be. I have a hard time making this make sense in my head. But the, the, the rune that is talked about on Mermaid's Hideaway has to mean merfolk, eye, or hiding. So looking at this eight pages or eight, this page with eight runes on it, it says silver blade ship. And then the, the fourth one is a diamond with a dot underneath of it, a diamond with a droplet. So I'm assuming that that has to mean either coral below or sorrow. So silver blade coral or silver blade ship coral doesn't make sense. Silver blade ship sorrow doesn't make sense. Silver blade ship below makes sense. We know that the silver blade sank. We don't know where it sank, but I think this might be helping us understand that. I don't know what five is. Rock and then C. So rock C and then the last one. The last one I think ties to the mermaid tattoo and the ruin. As I keep jumping back and forth between these, the last one could mean merfolk, eye, or hiding. So silver blade ship below something rock C hiding makes sense to me or merfolk, see merfolk. So we might have to figure out what's going on with the merfolk if we want to understand what's going on with the silver blade. So Falcor has a, a couple hints as to what, what the last ru runes might mean. Um, I'm sure he's going to have a video out about this at some point, so I'll let him kind of tell that story for now. I'm sure we're going to find out soon about what's going on with this, but it's been really, really cool to try and uncover some of this stuff. It's actually, there was a reference on Twitter that I actually really liked. I thought it was really cool uh, where I, I, it was referenced to the banana conquest or not conquest. It's kind of a weird way to say it. The contest that they had for the, the, uh, the hundred K or the, the, the one K bananas. I can't remember what they were, but the banana contest that they had at the beginning of the game, when it came out, it was really interesting to see how people kind of worked out some of these things. And there's some smart people out there. I, I am not necessarily one of them, but I can see the trends and kind of see where things are going. And I have to say that there are a few discrepancies with the lore right now uh, based on what I understand, because we know that Wanda got access to one of the cannons that was on the Silver Blade ship, which is strange because the Burning Blade, which was Flameheart's ship, was missing a cannon on the ghostly representation at the end of Heart of Fire. But there's no way that she would have been able to get where I think she got it until the shroud had moved away and we gained access to a certain relic. And because of that, this all happened before the other thing happened. So the timelines are, are mixed right now. And I'm really kind of wondering if this is going to reflect or at least explain how some of this stuff actually came about, because a lot of it is still kind of nebulous. And bear in mind, I'm, I'm going to take a step out of the game lore and look at it from a gaming perspective and say, yes, you know what? A lot of stuff was kind of flying the seat of the pants when the game was in its first year. Not everything necessarily made sense. And they were trying to get content out for the sake of saving the game. Not maybe not necessarily saving the game. That's I think the game would have been fine. But getting the game to a point that other people who criticized the lack of content didn't have much to criticize as a result of the updates that they were coming. And they even made a big old to do about it with the uh, with the actual E3 trailer that they that they announced with Curse Sales and uh, Forsaken Shores. So I love this. I'm very curious to see how this is going to play out. And until then, uh, mum's the word from Rare. We've been getting these little hints. I hate that they're using Instagram, but I'm spending a lot more time on Instagram now uh, taking a look at some of these photos and seeing if there are discrepancies between the photo 
and what's actually in the game because I think that they are docking or uh, shopping these actual images to try and leave us some of these clues. And I'm, I'm hoping that if I put this out there for you guys, that some of you who have time to be able to look into this will help me actually take a look into this. In fact, there's actually been uh, a whole uh, Larius, which I think is a, a great name for a pirate, uh, has actually been doing a great job of trying to find equal representations for different symbols in the world based on some of the stuff that's actually been put out by Sea of Thieves. Uh, it was it was kind of fun. We actually had a fun thing that was going on in uh, in one of the one of their tweets. It was an image of the Kraken uh, symbol and how they related it to the monster energy drink symbol. And that just devolved into a really fun, a really fun conversation about how monster energy drink is actually made with Kraken blood and lemon juice. And how the Order of Souls emissaries actually earn their Kraken eye curse by pouring monster energy drink into their eyes with lemon juice. And I, I, I can imagine that Monster probably doesn't want people trying that out to see if they can get cursed with the Kraken blood. But it, it was a lot of fun. And I had a really good time um, chatting with them and uh, uh, Cap, uh, Nath Pacewell about that in the in on Twitter. So I don't know when... This is going to get resolved. I'm not sure like how things are going to, to play out. But if, if this is a tease, if this is a hint that we're going to get more information about the Silver Blade ship, I am all for that because it is it has been really interesting to try and work out what is going on with Flameheart Jr. Jr. is still missing. He might be in the game. We may even we, we may even be interacting with him and not realize it either through disguise or just sheer obliviousness uh but it is definitely clear that the reaper's bones emissary cherish the chalice and that the chalice was something that was given to his crew that turned him into skeletons and i'm really really wondering why they use skeleton runes to have on all of their cosmetics everything so i have a feeling that the reaper's bones are tied directly to uh, I, and I still, I still believe this to this day. I still think that that door, that trap door in the Reaper's Bones hideout, is going to open, and inside we're going to get that Reaper's Bones uh, pirate legend hideout, their version. We've got the Dark Adventurer set in the game right now. It's amazing. It's a very dark version of the Pirate Lord set. So I don't know if they're trying to insinuate that 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 the Pirate Legend is the the light side of that, the positive side of that. It doesn't it doesn't make sense based on that. But you know, I'm willing to take that for what it is. But I want to know what's going on with that. I want to dive into that lore just a little bit. So this is kind of where I'm at with the game right now um we're trying to find out if there's more symbols i know there's been a couple posts on this reddit thread talking about a fourth ruin that's in the pirate legend hideout that duke doesn't mention uh they say that it's located on a bench next to the ghostly museum or musicians and that the ruin resembles the numeral five that's when you actually inspect it it says it resembles the numeral five and as far as i can tell i can't find anything that might suggest more information about why it would be five so stepping out of the game taking a look at it from a game perspective i'm wondering if rare had this one in the game prior to when they initially wanted it to and that this coming season when it flips over to season two that's when we actually start to get more information about these different tablets and duke will give us more hints as to what these other tablets are that might actually explain more about the the skeleton script on this page the eight symbols uh i feel like we've worked out six i think the last two are still in question, uh, but again, I'm going to leave Falcor to make his videos about what he thinks those two are, because I think he's onto something, and it kind of coincides with what I've seen people talking about on the Sea of Thieves Discord. Very exciting stuff, uh, especially if you're into the lore like I am. I hope this was clear enough for you. If you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up in the Discord or on Twitter. Uh, my DMs are always open and you can always message me on Discord because I, I can kind of walk you path or walk you down the path of my my thinking for this and find the examples that I found when I was digging through this and 
if you have insight on what this could be as well, I, I would love to hear what your insight is for it because it's it's interesting to uh, to talk to other people about what's going on with how they're doing this kind of cross promotion through Instagram, through Twitter, through the game and doing stuff that they that they have been doing for a long time. It's clear we've been getting lore from other parts of the 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 uh, franchise, I guess would be the best way to put it, from the rest of the franchise through the comics. I hope we get another comic that coincides with season 2. I really do. I don't know where they would go with that, but I have a feeling that there's plenty of characters from the novel that they could touch on that haven't been brought to light with the rest of the game that might give us clues based on what's on insiders to kind of lock down some of the interactions that we're going to have with features and content that are coming to the game. I am very excited. I feel like I I was I was giddy and very very and uh, just uh, yeah, I guess excited is the best word I can come up with it. I was shocked at just how amazing this is going to be and I'm looking forward to how we can actually interact with these things in the future. Hopefully, hopefully we don't have to wait long. I would, I would hate if we have to wait long, but I understand that there's a cadence, there's testing, there's bugs, there's feedback. All of that stuff has to come into play before it gets brought to the, to the live game. So make sure you're heading over to insiders, get your hour, get that silver blade cosmetic set because you, you out there wearing it are, are going to be, uh, are going to be the, the real, the real know-it-alls when it comes to what's coming. And I appreciate that. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you're having a good time enjoying this episode. Just wanted to let you know over on Green Man Gaming, there is now a sale going on for 20% off Outriders for Steam. This is the DM free or DRM version of it. It's just the standard edition, but if you head over to Green Man Gaming, you can pick that up for $48. Now, I know what you're thinking, Logan. A lot of us have Game Pass. It's on Game Pass Day 1. True, but it's not on Game Pass for PC. So PC players are still going to have to buy this for now i've heard that it should be coming to game pass for pc but if you want to own it without having to worry about picking up game pass just to play it green man gaming is going to be the best way to save the best amount of money on that from the get-go it is a really fun game i've had a good time with it so far i'm dabbling between that and red dead redemption 2 on top of my other games as a service at the moment so i haven't gotten as far as i want to but i still enjoy the gunplay and uh, you know i i could go with a better story but i've heard it gets better in the end so i'm looking forward to that if you like gears of war if you like the division this game is definitely up there it feels close to uh destiny in that style in that aspect but a new world bunch of people bunch of cool powers great to play with other people and it is cross-platform as well too All right, Pirates. So uh, light news week this episode. Um, there's a few things going on that I'm kind of holding on to uh, that aren't necessarily time related. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I kind of put those aside for now and uh, don't don't chew on the fat too much with this. But I did want to read a couple bits of uh, news or, or feedback from the, the discord. Uh, Frank FP wrote in. And uh, back on the 24th and says, Captain Logan, just listen to this week's episode and would like to thank you uh, or would like to say that I understand why Glitterbeard event touched you so much. Uh, I've been listening to the podcast for a long time, but only recently took the step of being part of the community as I'm not that social. I mean, I enjoy being social, but I really need my alone time. I can understand that. Don't worry about it, Frank. So I've seen myself as a solo player, probably what I would consider hard mode. Uh, that's me saying that. Um, but I re have really enjoyed being part of the Keelhauled community and sailing with you guys. So seeing the Glitterbeard event just made clear to me that community and friends is really what this game is all about. My enjoyment of Sea of Thieves has increased many fold since I decided to reach out to you guys. And so my enjoyment of the game was huge to begin with. So thanks for starting and maintaining this great community of players. I am sure that is totally in Glitterbeard's spirit. Um, I, I cannot thank you enough for, for giving this feedback. I absolutely love this game and I probably would still play it if it wasn't for the community, but having you all as part of the, the discord makes it so much easier to jump in with folks that I know and trust and are willing to help each other out that it is so great to see a ton of new pirates actually come 
into the Discord. A lot of folks uh, joining up and working on helping each other get this glitter beard event done get to pirate legend get as much gold as you can after we just spent a whole bunch of gold on all of these cosmetics and looking to the future i hope that all of you are using these relationships and these bonds to help with new events that come along to help work things out to help make sure that people are getting uh, access to the content so thank you discord community uh thank you to the listeners who are just supporting the the podcast passively i i know you're out there i know you think about maybe writing in and forget and just don't get around to it i totally appreciate you just listening to the show uh if anything just share the show with other pirates that you come in contact with if you want them to to have something to listen to on the go when they can't play the game because that's how i feel most of the time is i never get to play the game as much as i want the podcast is what gives me an outlet to spend time with the community members so that i can see how they feel see how i feel and then share that with you the Next thing that I wanted to jump into is actually a question from Caleb, uh, who pressed me uh, last time we, I was sailing with him to make sure I bring this up. Otherwise, he'd probably be upset that I wasn't paying attention to questions and feedback. So he wrote in with a question uh, with season one coming to a close and having had a while to play around with the new Merchant Voyage, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's actually been pretty interesting to read some of the responses. The community actually came out on the Discord. People's Republic says, forgettable, not lucrative compared to other means in the game. I would not call it quote unquote fun in parentheses, neither as cargo runs. I would probably never do it again after I get the sales. I would like to see a much better blend of higher value loot with a chance to get bone dust. It's a good take. Shaggy Dog wrote in and uh, after that and says, I like the new Merchant Voyage better than going to get chicken or some chickens or bottles and to take them here. Uh, the season one or the season I like as I played it casually and managed to get to 100 with ease within a few weeks. I didn't buy the season pass as there weren't, wasn't really anything I wanted from it that was locked behind it. TT Beef Child says, I really like the new Merchant Voyages too. Uh, it got me to Pirate Legend, and I like how you uh, use a little brain power. And Brig Big Bad Pad, or sorry about that, Pad. Uh, Big Bad Pad wrote in uh, in response to People Republic's feelings towards the merchant missions coming from a uh, GPM or gold per minute standpoint. Initially, uh, Pad agrees with him that the loot you get is low value, but it is high in quantity, and doing the voyage gets you to level five even before you actually open the captain's cabin if you find the key. This is good for me as Reapers. Reaping level five merchant flags is a nice way to spend your time and the gold per minute is old. Okay. Uh, Chenzo Rodin says, yeah, but a level five merchant flag is the rarest. Uh, Pat agrees and says that it would be nice to see some top end loot in the captain's cabin. I've seen a mega keg in there, but a bone dust would be, would also be really nice. I like Shaggy Dog, uh, quite enjoyed doing the voyages even when they weren't working correctly. These are kind of the, the sentiments that I have with it. Um, I think that the design of the voyage is great. I love the idea that they are sending you out onto the sea and actually doing stuff on the sea as, a, as opposed to being stuck on islands, uh, chasing down animals or trying to ferry cargo crates in good condition. Uh, I like the fact that you were salvaging ships that have sunk. It's always been an interesting aspect of the game that you see shipwrecks. And while we sink ships, those ships disappear and then we gather their loot. And we've never seen a variety in shipwreck type. Uh, this is something that Super Pack has mentioned in the past and has actually uh, mentioned to Rare a few times as, as well as other people that we'd like to see sloops and brigs as shipwrecks to have a little bit ease of getting uh, loot from there or even just supplies. I don't know how difficult that is, and I still like the idea of taking the sea posts out of the game and putting the shipwrecks from the arena in place of the sea posts and having more NPCs on those sea posts or those shipwrecks as kind of a, an actual sea post. Uh, it's weird that it's just this little rock and there's a little a little dock that's attached to it, and that's a sea post. Um, I much rather the idea that there is a shipwreck out there that someone has managed to keep afloat and that those shipwrecks uh, or th that those those actual posts uh, are actually 
better focal points for ships. Um, it's, it's much interesting or much more interesting to me to have those in the game and be able to loot those if you need to. Maybe they're out in the middle of nowhere and it's, it's harder to get, sh- uh, supplies and those are a good way to get them, uh, unlike shipwrecks. But I, I do think that I would like to have varying types of shipwrecks. The thing that I really enjoy about these voyages though, getting back to that is we have the lock and key mechanic working for doors. And if it's one thing I've always wanted from the galleon, and I, I, I could see this with the uh, with the sloop or, or the brig, it, it would take some tweaking, but I would really appreciate that, is having a way to have a door that the captain can unlock and lock and can have the key. Now, everything in the game is holding it. Everything is an item. You have to pick up a key to unlock something uh, in most cases uh, if you can't unlock it. But much like the gold hoarders who wear their keys around their neck, I would love to have a designated captain for a ship and have that captain have a lock that is only accessible to the captain. But if the captain were to be killed, that key could then be looted and whatever's locked in the captain's cabin. Now, bear in mind, I'm talking about an actual player ship. I'm not talking about a shipwreck. I'm not talking about a skeleton ship. I'm talking about an actual person player ship. If the captain gets killed, which would put more emphasis on the captain being safe. So you'd want someone who's good on staying on the ship and can get the ship away and keep it safe. I would love the idea of having locked doors on a galleon that if you kill the captain, you could loot the key from that body. They would go to the ferry. They would drop a key. You could pick up the key. You could unlock the cabin door and you could actually uh, loot the cabin. The caveat on that is, you know, how long does it take for them to get back from the ferry? Uh, How much loot would they really put in there? Is it worth putting loot in there instead of just stowing it below deck where it's a lot harder to get to and a lot harder to get stuff out of? It's it's just an idea that I'm kind of playing around with. I understand that there's a lot of flags and a lot of things that people could probably come up with to say like, hey, that doesn't sound like a really good system. And I agree. It's something that could totally be workshopped. But I love that this functionality is now in the game because it it opens up the opportunity for other things to happen like this idea that I'm suggesting. So if they want to keep working with that, please keep working with that. I think that this merchant mission is great. It may not be lucrative, but it is a great voyage design. The fact that you get to sail around and you get to track down the key, you get to find out little bits of the story of whatever this voyage is, and then come across the shipwreck itself, and then actually get rewarded for that. And with the emissary being able to get to level five very quickly, love it. It's a great way for people who aren't going to be pirate legend, and bear in mind, there's a lot of players out there that are not pirate legend, and this is one of the best ways to actually get Merchant Alliance reputation. Now, you could do one voyage, get an emissary up to level five, and then swap out voyages, start working on cargo crates, use the cargo crates from the level five emissary, combine them with another emissary or with a, with a cargo crate voyage and stock the ship with a bunch of crates and just haul those off to the different locations. That could actually be very lucrative. It's a lot easier than having to go chase down gold chickens or keep pigs alive or keep safe from gold snakes. But you still have to deal with the fact that you do have precious cargo on board. It is subject to storms, megalodons, krakens, skeleton ships, other players, things like that. You have to keep it safe. But the fact that you can get up to level five merchant alliance with the emissary so quickly just off of one of these voyages is exactly what that merchant rep needed. So I'm glad it's in the game. I agree that the contents of the captain's cabin should be on par, similar to the gold hoarder voyage with the vaults that the higher reputation you have the more trusted you are to go retrieve this cargo and the more valuable the loot that's in it should be now it's not set in stone this is something that can change if rare's listening to the feedback hopefully they are taking this into an account or into account and look to change this if deemed necessary. If it's one thing I've learned if we look at the dark adventurer outfits they are aware that It is much easier to get gold these days, and I'm hoping that they will continue to look forward into the future to find ways to introduce new cosmetics or new ways to sink gold so that we don't run into the situation where people are sitting on millions upon millions of gold uh, with nothing to do with them that 
just kind of devalues gold inherently. It devalues treasure. Right now, everyone is trying to grab as much treasure as they possibly can because they're trying to get those stores back up. They want to be able to buy these cosmetics. And at this point, it's very important that we have ways for us to do this that is still lucrative. And having a voyage that gets you to level five in the Merchant Alliance, especially if you're working on Pirate Legend, that's great. That, that is a positive. We should be looking to do that with different voyages. There should be an easy way to get to rank five in the Order of Souls through, through the actual uh, ghost ship voyage. Like that ghost ship voyage, since it's one of the newer ones, should get you to level five right away. So that way, when you get the emissary voyage out of that, that you actually go and you kill those skeletons at level five and you get the most value out of that. Same thing with the treasure vault. The treasure vault should be enough to get you to level five. And then that way, that's a quick, easy way. If you're doing it at a high level to be able to earn that reputation, to get that emissary rank up and to be able to earn gold faster. All right, pirates, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thank you all for the questions, the feedback. Uh, we're going to be getting into season two in the near future. I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I'm really interested to know how they plan on uh, working out the levels this time around, if they're going to change anything, if it's going to be harder, or easier. Uh, I can't wait to find out more information about that. And just to kind of get a roadmap in a three month span of what rare plans on doing for this next season. Uh, this first one went off really well. I think a lot of people have been very happy with it. I want to know how the rest of the seasons are going to go. Is it going to be very similar? Are we going to get any bigger events coming in or bigger releases? Uh, the Merchant Voyage felt like the big thing that got added. Everything else was kind of just releasing cosmetics in a gated cadence. And I kind of want to know, uh, will the next one actually introduce um, something big that that will be changing up the way the game is played? So uh, let me know what you thought of this. Um, give me some more information. If you guys want to dive into um, some some discussions, I'd love to, to get some of that. Uh, do me a favor. If you guys are on Apple products, iPhones, um, the Apple podcasts could do with some reviews. Uh, I would love to get some more reviews in there just to kind of get the numbers up so that uh, my my show gets filtered out to a more broader scope of, of the audience in the video game. Every time I check each week, um, the, the chart are doing well, but I, I would love to get up into that 150 range if possible. It's not a must. It's a request. I totally understand if you don't feel like it or if you already have. I definitely appreciate that. Regardless, if you're hearing this, I love you. I, I love the support that you give me just by listening to this, by joining in the discord, by hitting me up on Twitter. Also, anyone that's been messaging me on Twitter or in the discord with finding my skeleton, I've been retweeting those and sharing it with the rest of uh, anyone that follows me. And I, I love that. I love that you guys are finding me in the game. It means a lot um, to, to be able to see that in there, kind of make sure that I actually am being found by other people and being killed and I'm getting skulls to you in, in one fashion or another. I actually really love that. If you have any insight about Duke, uh, definitely jump in. Let me know about that as well, too. So pirates, uh, if you want to get a hold of me, always do so on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. You can always write in to the email address for the show, C-A-P-T L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. That's capped logan at gmail.com show notes always have links for stuff that i talked about that i thought was important always has links to the discord server as well as the uh, patreon to get you involved with the community events that are going to be going on as well as the end of the month shows a lot of that stuff isn't in the tiers uh, that that are present there, what you're paying for is what you get. Anything that comes afterward, I just want to add is uh, uh, unspoken value because uh, I just appreciate that you're supporting me. But that way, if if we have to cancel for whatever reason, I don't feel bad uh, that that you're not getting what you paid for. That's kind of what's going on with that. So, but thank you to all of you who are supporting me there. It's been helping out a lot, and it's actually been helping me plan out a couple things in the future too. I've already done a couple changes in the in in the recordings and. Stuff and, and taking care of a couple things with that. So I appreciate it. Uh, also helps me kind of get things that I need uh, planned ahead for a uh, better SSD. I need to get, actually get a new SSD for my, my system so that I can move my games off of it so that I can reformat my hard drive, get this system actually working better because it is, it is kind of a mess right now, but that's beside the point. Pirates, uh, that's going to do it. Thank you. I love you. And I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves.
listening to the Robots Radio Podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net. Do you like adventure? Yeah. Do you like laughing? Uh, yeah. Would you like to listen to a group of people you don't know play D&D and reference retro pop culture you vaguely remember? Um... Excellent. You're going to love Committee Quest. We play D&D in the world of Amarin. We use adventure modules and supplements made by people in the community. We also have a sweet synthwave backing track. Come and join us on our adventure. Volume 1 has been completed. Volume 2 coming the end of January. You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, or wherever you get your podcasts from. In a world where solid-state electronics and vacuum tubes are still meta, people never stop loving atomic-powered everything. A chosen 500 stepped inside a subterranean vault to be spared the nuclear horror of the inevitable Great War. 25 years later, they emerge after the fallout settles to retake Appalachia. Among them, two former rivals whose blood feud will tear West Virginia apart in their epic struggle for survival. Chad, a vault bro who has a strength of 15, an intelligence of 2, and is a complete wasteland dickhead. Simon, a complicated anti-hero who chooses light and hope but accidentally becomes a cannibal and wakes up naked and afraid with a Scorch Beast Queen after a date goes terribly wrong. What? I mean, it's a wild wasteland, right? This dark humor radio drama will have you driving off the road and crawling out from under the fallout. Two men. One wasteland. And so many nukes. Chad, a Fallout 76 podcast. Rated R. Now streaming on your holotape player podcasty thing.